early on um, before the league got shut down, you know, the, the, the team had brought a doctor in um, to talk to everybody, you know, tell everybody, OK, this is this is happening a little bit about it. And one of the first things he said was masks do absolutely nothing. <laughs> and he, he he was like, I'm, I'm just letting you guys know that um, apparently the way he phrased it was like, I guess the COVID particles were so small that they could pass through, you know, you know, pretty much most masks, especially cloth masks. Yeah. And, uh, so that that was our first thing. So when he first said that, I was like, OK, I'm not I'm not wearing a mask. And then you have these mask mandates and things like that. I'm like, what is going on? And so. Uh, so, yeah, it was pretty crazy. And in, in, in the bubble, a lot of things didn't make sense. But we kind of just went along with it because we wanted to play. Right. So, all right, let's talk about the bubble situation, because I think people or people that don't pay attention to the NBA that are watching this don't even know what that is. But they basically had you guys in your own sort of lockdown so that the season could kind of somewhat continue. And sometimes you'd have masks on the bench, but then you take them off to play. So now you're sweating on each other and spitting on each other and probably bleeding on each other. But then when you sit down, you're wearing the mask. I mean, none of it really made sense. Did did coaches and players talk about kind of the craziness of the whole thing? Yeah, we definitely did. And and I think, especially early on, like when we were first getting on, getting into the bubble, everyone still, the, 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 the world is so afraid. So the NBA and all these different organizations are trying to do all that they can to kind of like, okay, we need to focus on this and tackle this, but at the same time, we need guys to play. So what, what can we do? Okay, they wear the mask on the bench and they go into the game and take it off. But it was it was such hysteria and, and just things weren't making sense. And, and so we definitely had conversations about, you know, needing to test every day and, and the mask thing. You know, early on, um, before the league got shut down, you know, the, the, the team had brought a doctor in um, to talk to everybody, you know, tell everybody, okay, this is, this is happening, a little bit about it. And one of the first things he said was, masks do absolutely nothing. <laughs> and he, he he was like, I, I, I'm just letting you guys know that um, apparently the way he phrased it was like, I guess the COVID particles were so small that they could pass through, you know, you know, pretty much most masks, especially cloth masks. Yeah. And, uh, so that that was our first thing. So when he first said that, I was like, OK, I'm not I'm not wearing a mask. And then you have these mask mandates and things like that. I'm like, what is going on? And so. Uh, so, yeah, it was pretty crazy. And in, in, in the bubble, a lot of things didn't make sense. But we kind of just went along with it because we wanted to play. Were you surprised the way some guys just kind of took the orders, even though they thought it didn't work? Or the fact that you guys are mostly in your mid-20s at the peak of physical health, like your cardiovascular is better than basically anyone on the planet. You all eat right, et cetera, et cetera. Yet everybody started doing all this crazy stuff. I, I wouldn't say I was surprised. I I, I mean, societal pressure is, is, is tough. I mean, it, it works. Um, and especially when you have, you know, people that are higher up or, um, just people around you who are who kind of adopt this mainstream, you know, idea or ideology and kind of just run with it. So I, I don't think I was surprised. Even myself early on, I was like, OK, this is what we have to do. It, it wasn't until things got later on and we get out the bubble and then the vaccine starts coming around. And then I, I can just see the, you know, just how much it was being pushed. And you have all the people on social media, you know, uh, demeaning everyone and, and all this stuff. And then, you know, the thing about the Rolling Stone article happens to me. And that's when I'm like, okay, this thing is really not just about a vaccine. It's it's political. It, there's an agenda. There's a bias to it. And um, but I know I wouldn't surprise that everybody kind of went along with it. All right. So let's get to that part in just a sec. But I just want to do a little more on the bubble. So again, for people that don't know, so they basically had you guys. Were you all pretty much in one hotel and had to limit who was coming in and out? Like they really, the idea was that you weren't going to basically see anybody else, hus- you know, wives kids, et cetera, right. and that you would play against each other and that's it. But I've heard from some other players, that's not exactly how the thing worked. Well, it was it was three hotels. And so you had teams split up in these three hotels um, and pretty much the order was like, you're not allowed to leave. Once you come in, that's it. Um, as the bubble kind of went on and we got to the playoffs, I think they allowed some people's families to come in um, or, or just their wives or something like that. But early on, it was like strict. We test every day. I, I, I think we were testing like twice a day. I'm not even completely <laughs> sure, but you're testing every day. Um, you know, they had a lounge set up. They had a barbershop for us. So they, they tried to kind of, you know, help it, you know, be worthwhile. But it was just it, it was just tough to kind of just be in the hotel room all the time. But yeah, no, nothing in, nothing out, uh, food all there. So it was really like a like a jail low key. <laughs> I, I mean, I heard some rumors that people were coming and going and able to get uh, some well, yeah, lady friends and- inside, et cetera. And, and some some people got in trouble, you know. Some people who who got caught. I, I don't I don't know about. I didn't hear anything about guys actually being successful with that. But I, I I did hear the story about one guy trying and getting in trouble. 
Right. So, okay, so then the bubble passes and now things start shifting towards the vaccine. And that's where that video of you, uh, what, what month, do you remember what month that was? No, not at all. <laughs> all right, so it's, a, it's about a year and a half ago. I mean, it was at the height of the whole thing. And basically you, you gave a spectacular, you know, we'll, we're, we'll lay it in right here. We're gonna lay in the, the speech right here so people can listen to it. It is my belief that the, the vaccine status of every person should be their own choice um, and completely up to them without, the, without bullying, without being pressured or without being forced into doing so. Uh, I'm not ashamed to say that I'm uncomfortable with taking the vaccine at this time. I think that we're all different. We all come from different places. We've all had different experiences and hold dear to different beliefs. And uh, what it is that you do with your body when it comes to putting medicine in there uh, should be your choice, um, free of the ridicule and the opinion of others. I've I've had COVID um, in the past. And so our our understanding of antibodies, of natural immunity has uh, uh, changed a a great deal from the onset of the pandemic and is still evolving. I understand that the vaccine would uh, um, help if, if, if you catch COVID and uh, you'll be able to have less symptoms um, from contracting it. But with me having COVID in the past and to having antibodies um, with my current um, age group and uh, uh, fitness, physical fitness level, um, it's not necessarily a fear of mine. Uh, taking the vaccine, um, like I said, it would decrease my chances of uh, uh, having a severe reaction, but it does open me up to the, albeit rare chance, but the possibility of having an adverse reaction to the vaccine itself. Um, I don't believe that being unvaccinated means infected or being vaccinated means um, uninfected. You can still catch COVID um, with or with not having the vaccine. Um, I would say, honestly, the, the, the craziness of it all in terms of not being able to say that it should be everybody's fair choice without being demeaned or um, talked crazy to doesn't uh, make one comfortable to do what said person is uh, telling them to do. Um, Yeah, I I would say that's that's a couple of the reasons that, um, you know, I would say I'm hesitant at this time, but at the end of the day, uh, I don't feel that it is, um, you know, anyone's reason to come out and say, well, this is why or this is not why. It should just be their decision and, um, you know, loving your neighbors, not just loving those that, that agree with you or look like you or uh, move in the same way that you do. It's, it's uh, uh, you know, loving those who don't. So that right there, I mean, you laid out more common sense, decency and thoughtful analysis than pretty much anything I saw on CNN. And that's where I was like, man, I got to talk to this guy. Yeah, I, I mean, so again, like early on, like me just trying to take a step back and just see everything that was going on. I was like, okay, they're saying that the the, the virus has a 99.97 survival rate. I'm young, you know, people who are older and have comorbidities or, or you know, or obese are really struggling with this thing. So I just said, you know, as I saw how much the vaccine was being pushed and forced on everybody, and then you see, you know, social media and people, you know, calling people crazy for not wanting to take it or even just being hesitant or asking questions. And then you have people's medical and religious exemptions being denied and people losing their jobs. I was like, man, this is insane. This isn't right. And so I just said, you know what? I'm young. I'm healthy. I don't have any you know, side effects or anything like that. I don't see the wisdom in putting something into my body that's not going to stop me from getting the virus or transmitting it to someone else. I'm, I, that's just where I'm at and I'm not going to do it. And, you know, at the same time, I wanted to be a, you know, a hope and a, a voice for other people who are going through this who didn't have a platform. Was that just a normal post-game press conference or were you planning on doing that or how did that even happen? Were you thinking about, hey, I got to say something? No, it, it was actually perfect because the, the Rolling Stone article. So so if, if around that time, the team calls me and they say, hey, you know, the Rolling Stone wants to do an, uh, an interview with you, you know, about everything that's going on. I'm saying, cool. So uh, I get on the phone with him and he's like, you know, you're unvaccinated. And I'm thinking to myself, like, how do you even know that I'm unvaccinated? <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, Welcome to but, the um, mainstream media, my friend. But but yeah, it, it was actually a great conversation. Like we're talking and like he's like, oh, you know what? I, I, I agree with you on that and all that's a good point. And I pretty much laid out to him exactly what I went on to say the next day. And and so, but the article drops that night, like the Sunday night. And it says Jonathan Isaac came to his, you know, vaccination status, whatever, by watching Donald Trump press conferences and studying black history. And that's what I'm like, oh my gosh. And yep. everybody on social media calling me crazy and I, I sound I sound stupid in the article but the next day was media day so Monday is media day and I was expecting the question I was on the phone with my pastor that that night and he was like well you have an opportunity to talk about it tomorrow at media day if they ask you about it and I just kind of tried to lay it out there 
Yeah, so that was your first time being hit by the media like that, huh? Welcome to the party. Well, it was my it was my first not being hit by the media because then you have the whole standing in the bubble thing that was that was before that that was in June of 2020. But it was the first time. Oh like, right. I, so yeah, wait. Let's back up. G tell people about that first. Right. We we skipped over something big. Well, yeah. Well, um. So around the time of of what happened to George Floyd, as as tragic and as wrong as it was, there was a lot of pressure on NBA players going into the bubble. Um. To to have to kneel for the national anthem and to wear the Black Lives Matter T shirt. But again, I tr same thing with the vaccine. I tried to step back and say, OK, what, what is the right way for me to respond in this moment that I feel would bring real change? Um, and for some people in that moment, it was kneeling and wearing the T-shirt. But for me, it wasn't. And so I just looked at I looked at my life and said, you know what? My life has been supported and changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I can't I don't see a, a, a greater message or a greater antidote or hope for the times that we see ourselves in racism and and not even that just all the things that plague the hearts of men that i know that the gospel can change i wanted to stand up and give that message i didn't want to go with anybody's narrative or you know the whole the whole you know as crazy as the whole black lives matter movement was i, I didn't want to you know kind of just fall into it and so i decided to be the only one to stand and to to share that message of you know loving your neighbor um you know the way they truly want to be loved if you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.